Hi, this is Catlin with a quick introduction for how you can make a worksheet or a handout or a quiz into a Google Form lockbox challenge. So I was coaching elementary teachers this week, and this is a, a handout that they were using to have students reviewing collective nouns. So traditionally, a teacher would give this to a student and the student would work on it. They would hand it in and then it would be up to the teacher to look through the answers and potentially mark them correct or incorrect. So instead of doing that, I the teachers I was working with decided they were going to make copies of the handout. They were going to pair students and ask students to tackle the activity together. So to talk about the sentences and which of the collective nouns they felt best fit the blank in the sentence. So the first part of the activity was entirely on offline. Then once they had agreed on all of their answers, we created a lockbox challenge. So to create a lockbox challenge with Google Forms, you create a Google Google form, a new one. I'm going to call this our collective noun lock box challenge. And then I always click here so that it takes the same. Oh man, let me try that again. Um, collective noun lock box challenge. And Hopefully, we'll save up here. All right. So the first question in the lockbox is just their name. So I want students to start with their name. So in a lockbox challenge, you want to make sure every single answer is required. And I like to separate my sections so that students are only looking at one question per section. So I'm going to create another section. And then I'm going to title that section question one. Then I'm going to go back to my handout and I am going to copy the first sentence in the handout or the activity. I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to say plus sign because I want to add a question and I want the question to be a short answer because they're filling in the blank. And then I'm just going to paste that sentence right here. I'm going to make it required and then I'm going to go ahead and click these three little dots and I'm going to select response validation. So their response is going to be text. So I'm going to choose text and it must contain the word swarm. Now keep in mind the answers are case sensitive. So I always tell students just type in lowercase, especially when I'm working with elementary, so they're not confused. I often will also enter a little note here, like if they get it wrong, this will pop up. Oops, try again. Then I create another section and I'm going to label this section question number two. I'm going to go back to the handout and I'm going to select copy and then paste question number two into another question. Remember, I'm making these short answer because students are going to be filling in the blank with a word. I want them to be required. I click the three dots for response validation and then I have to say text since I'm looking for a text answer and the answer to this one is team and then again. Oops, try again. And then if they get it wrong, it'll say, oops, try again, and the box will turn red on the student view, and then they know if they got one wrong, they have to go back to their work with their partner and say, okay, this one wasn't right, which one do we think might work here? Then I'm gonna create another section, and this one will be called question number three. I'm going to add the question type, which is short answer, and then I'm going to copy and paste, and then make it required, response validation, text, and pack. And then one more time, get the response. So I could go through and make this all for every section for each of the questions, which is what I did when I was working with the teachers that I coached this week. So if you go into preview mode, let's say I'm looking at this as a student, me and my partner have finished the handout. So the first thing I'm going to do is type my name, go to next. And because I separated it by sections, they're only going to see one question at a time. So if I'm a student and I saw a couple students today say um, their answer was bunch. So if I say Manuel poked the hive and was chased by a bunch of bees and say next, since that's not really the collective noun that they've learned to associate with bees, I have to ask my partner, we have a conversation. 
and we try a different word. And if the word is correct, we get to go to the second question. So the kids know if their answer was right, they go on to question two. The nice thing about this is the teacher isn't grading the work, the students are inputting the answers, and when they realize they have an incorrect answer, then it's their job to put their heads together, have another conversation, look at their answers, and try to figure out how do we correct this. So really the, the onus is on the students to input their answers and then make corrections as needed. So hopefully this will help teachers to you know, take kind of a classic handout or worksheet style activity or review task and turn it into a collaborative offline and then online challenge.